All right. Hi, my name is Laura Calti. Um, I'm pleased to be presenting this paper on facilitating connected learning PD for library professionals through design cycles. Um, I'm actually representing a larger team that's from two different labs at UCI. That's Kylie Pepler's Creativity Labs and Andreas Bustamante's STEM Learning Labs. My co-authors for this paper are printed there in the corner, but Carlina Ochoa, Vanessa Bermudez, Phoebe Chu, Santiago Ojeda Ramirez, and Kylie Pepler. I'm gonna minimize myself there so we can see the slides well. So um, just as I go into this paper, I'd like to start with a little background to frame our project. Um, so first of all, we're theoretically grounding our paper in Mimi Ito and colleagues' connected learning framework. Um, as many in this conference are already aware, um, the connected learning framework is an ecological theoretical perspective on learning that emphasizes the importance of connected experiences across home, school, and informal community settings. Um, connected learning occurs when learning environments connect with the personal interests, offer supportive relationships, and provide new opportunities to foster academic, civic, and career growth. So you can automatically see how this connects to libraries um, uh, as centers for interest-driven learning, learning that's peer-supported and multi-generational. Libraries are fantastic contexts for understanding and applying the connected learning model. Connected learning principles have been widely embraced by libraries as staff and librarians work to create safe and engaging spaces for individuals to learn, socialize, and connect. Within library spaces, librarians and library staff are key to the overall learning landscape. They don't just provide books and materials, but they are consistently planning and facilitating active learning within their departments or areas. Um, the role of a learning facility or facilitator or teacher in the library is key to understanding the types of professional development and support that librarians need. As the library sciences field is constantly evolving, particularly around emerging technologies, library staff are challenged to maintain the knowledge and skill sets needed to deliver programs and serve their community members. In order to facilitate this learning in libraries, it's essential for library staff to maintain and enhance knowledge through lifelong learning and high quality PD. So when we think about prior research on library PD and we read, read the papers that have come out, we see that library professionals have emphasized a desire for opportunities to engage actively and share ideas with others, as well as a need to be creative, innovative, and um, to have experience-based learning to appeal to their own interests and motivation for learning. So they're looking to learn content and strategies that they can directly apply to their library programming. Um, using design cycles in PD can be a powerful mechanism to meet that need for active, engaging, creative PD that builds capacity in the connected learning model and gives librarians a chance to collaborate and to try out their ideas, gives library staff a chance to share experience, expertise, learn new technologies and skills, and work together toward creating new programs, materials, and assessments. So the purpose of our study is to answer a call. Um, in Mimi Ito and colleagues 2020 report on a decade of connected learning um, that came out and the title is um, the Connected Learning Research Network Reflections on a Decade of Engaged Scholarship. Um, in this paper, the authors issued a few challenges for the next phase of connected learning scholarship. One area they emphasized was a need to reconsider existing models of PD. So encouraging library professional, professionals' development of capacities as brokers and sponsors in addition to their role as content experts. So we aim to answer this challenge by bringing design cycles into connected learning PD for librarians and library staff. Our study extends current understandings of designing for connected learning by first applying the connected learning model to library staff, encouraging them to connect to their own interests and building their capacity as learning brokers, before then taking an iterative approach to designing for connected learning in their library. Um, our study is situated in the context of a PD series, which combines design cycles with connected learning and library spaces. We aim to answer the following research questions that you see right up there on the screen. The first one is how can connected learning plus design PD cycles allow library staff to design ideas that incorporate connected learning principles around library spaces, programs, and assessments? And second, we're wondering about the ways that this type of PD will illuminate assets and barriers facing library staff agency, um, which stay tuned because that's a really interesting one. <laughs> 
Um, our study adopts a community-based design-based research, or DBR, um, as a collaborative methodological approach that involves stakeholders and researchers working together to design solutions for educational problems. We, we used an iterative DBR approach guided by core principles, such as building trust and rapport with community members and stakeholders, as well as recognizing and valuing diverse forms of knowledge. In this case, the rapport with community members and stakeholders, we're talking about the librarians and library staff. Um, so that's, it's a little bit of um, a smaller, more insular model. Um, DBR is a valuable approach to de for designing activities, materials, and assessments to enhance education, and is particularly relevant to vibrant learning spaces filled with diverse educational resources and activities, such as libraries. Specifically, our PD program was designed to support library staff to dream, develop, design, and evaluate programs and activities based on a connected learning lens. Um, for our project, we worked with a main branch library in North Orange County, it's in a predominantly Latina community. Um, we held five PD sessions monthly from February to June of 2023. Each of the PD sessions lasted two hours. Participants included 14 librarians and library staff from a mix of library departments. So we had um, folks there from the children's department, youth and teens, the bookmobile, adults, and technology. Um, the authors of this paper designed and facilitated the PD sessions, along with two additional doctoral students um, with relevant uh, discipline-specific knowledge related to the PD series. Each session consisted of an icebreaker activity, a theoretical introduction related to the topic, and a design activity where librarians connected to the topic, the topic to their library space and shared these ideas out to the group. Um, <clears throat> our program design is rooted in constructionism, understanding that individuals construct knowledge as they engage in the creation and sharing of artifacts. That leads to learning that's personal, social, and cultural. Constructionism synergy with technology and design is further marked by its application as a framework for the design of school interventions and PD programs, for us PD programs, obviously. We developed our PD program to be responsive to librarian interests. The goal of the program was to build capacity around the connected learning framework and to support library programs. We chose to lean into designing for connected learning so that PD activities had practical applications for library staff, imagining that they would be able to apply their designs to respective library sections. Workaround design cycles was continuous and scaffolded throughout the PD sessions um, following a simple design cycle that you see there on the screen. The steps were a little truncated um, and it was a pretty quick design cycle. Um, the particular asset of connected learning is the centrality of participant interests. So we incorporated the library in the actual librarian's interests at three points. We did a survey prior to beginning the PD series. We aligned our PD activities with themes and topics from the design process, and then we also um, provided direct choice. Discipline-specific content, um, content was selected in alignment with librarian interests and in connection to technology, arts, and maker culture. So on the table at the top here, you can see our five different topics and the way that we um, did our design activities. And then below that, you'll see samples of the artifacts that correlate with those topics. So for example, um, for A, you see that we were creating vision boards and we used paper circuits um, to, to create these like visions and then created a group collage on the, on the wall. And then for example, the second one there is um, in the generative AI for storytelling workshop. That's an image that was created by one of the librarians. So um, each of those artifacts correlates with one of the topics above. Um, our data, um, when we came in to write the paper included two sets of researcher field notes from the PD sessions survey questions, constructed artifacts, including two written brainstorming activities and five making projects. To study the ways that design process allowed librarians to generate connected <laughs> learning design ideas while illuminating insights around structural assets and barriers, we used a mix of deductive and inductive processes. To address our first research question, we deductively coded for librarians and corporations of interest, relationships, and opportunities in their design ideas. And then after that, we surfaced the assets and barriers to library staff agency 
through an inductive analysis across design cycles to address our second research question. So we were looking for those assets and barriers at each step. Um, so on to our findings. Um, so first looking at the first research question where we were um, wondering how the cycles allow library staff to design ideas that incorporate connected learning pr principles around library spaces, programs, and assets. Um, so we found that the use of iterative design cycles in PD allowed them to consider the connected learning model on two levels. Um, as the library staff learned about connected learning in the first PD session, they initially connected the model to themselves. It was a personal process. They started with their own interests um, within the library. So that might have been a literary genre, an author, um, th the access to makerspace, technology. Um, and then by centering themselves in the connected learning model, they developed a deeper understanding of the theory. So they, they were considering their own programmatic and spatial interests in the library, their relationships with one another, um, be, you know, as peers there in the library, and also with their patrons, and the opportunities they had to learn about um, technology, to collaborate, to build new programs. So this step generated initial ideas around envisioning futures for the library that were aspirational and personal, um, but mostly very abstract. You know, it's like, oh, we want to organize things. We want to create things. We want to have these building blocks of success. Um, those are some examples there. Um, so after exploring the connected learning model on a personal level, then the librarians branched out. They began to formulate design goals that centered their patrons in the connected learning model. So from here, they shifted focus from their personal interest to that of their community members, specifically toward patrons who visit and interact their particular department. So, um, you know, folks that worked in the children's department were thinking about their kiddos and their families when they come in and interact together. Folks in the adult services department were thinking about their grownups and their seniors. They began to consider who their patrons are, what they say they want and need, and what programs and resources might be lacking or un, um, underdeveloped in the library. And as they formulated design goals, librarians generated more specific community-centered themes that incorporated the connected learning model. So like inclusivity, agency, partnerships, you see those up there on the screen there. Um, those are what seeded the, the design projects for the rest of the PD series. Design cycles became an instrumental mechanism for moving ideas from abstract to more concrete and for centering community needs. Library staff began to frame their own interests as areas of expertise that they could use as they um, considered how to learn about and build around their patrons' interests and how to encourage relationships between, between the patrons and patrons and their families and peers. Um, and opportunities for learning and they connected to career resources as well. So um, using the first two steps of our design cycle, so that's the imagine and research and the ideate plan and prototype steps, library teams turn their visions into concrete project design ideas and plans that incorporated connected learning principles um, around library spaces, programs, and assessments. Um, our second research question, um, where we're looking at how these PD cycles illuminate assessments and barriers facing library staff, um, was really particularly interesting for our team. Um, engaging in the design cycles, particularly at the first two levels of the design cycle, provided opportunities for understanding the assets and barriers facing the library staff, as well as how and where they're actually able to apply their ideas and designs within the library. So I'll start with talking about some of the assets we uncovered. Um, one asset is the staff's knowledge about and connection to their community. It became clear through the stories they shared about family and heritage connections. So for example, one librarian shared that her aunt had worked for the city uh, in the Department of Parks and Rec, while another shared they had gotten married at the courthouse next door. Um, many of the library staff also expressed a passion for caring about the most vulnerable members of their community. Um, and here's one librarian shared um, something that stands out is a lot of homeless people who are often overlooked. I've helped and engaged with them before. I've gotten a thank you for helping us, for seeing us. Um, so design cycles surface the librarian's deep knowledge and connection and commitment to their, um, to their community as they're designing programs and materials. Another asset is there's actually a high level of autonomy and creativity that library staff have in creating programs for their sections and for their patrons. <laughs> so while there may be restrictions based on staffing or like 
um, you know, holiday or thematic directions um, or directives, library staff are, are generally able to assert their own interests and choices into their department programs. So for example, when um, the children's services team participated in the PD focused on AI generation, one librarian used ChatGPT to create a St. Patrick's Day story timeline, uh, time outline. And then they implemented it while a librarian in the teen section used chat GPT to come up with a teen leadership skill building program. So they were able to, they're able to um, work together to try out new different things and to really kind of build and connect to one another's interests and to what they want to do in their programs. So we did also encounter some barriers. Um, as we try to move out of the prototyping step, or that second step in our design cycle into building and testing, we encountered barriers to librarian agency around designing and implementing programs. <clears throat> um, one barrier is structural. Libraries are public spaces. Um, they're at the intersection of interests from public and from city officials, and this puts them at the crosshairs of different budgetary and political ideas, as well as the desires of the public. So um, an example of one way the structural barrier plays out is in the ways information is disseminated or even withheld from library staff. So an example for this is um, in access to patron assessments. One librarian expressed her frustration with being unable to access information about patron interests. Um, she didn't have the ability to learn from online patron assessments about her own programs. Um, and then library staff also shared that while they're often consulted about new programs or facility changes, there's so many stakeholders along the line that by the time something is at, final decisions are actually made, a lot of times the librarian's ideas are lost along the way. That happened with the design of a play area outside the children's um, library. So uh, another barrier that emerged was resistance from patrons, community members, and city officials to evolving technologies. So librarians, even the ones who were not as tech savvy really seemed to view technology as an asset that required continuing education. Um, they described, but they described part of their community as conservative and resistant. So for example, many parents in the children's section reject Moxie the learning robot due to privacy concerns. Um, there's difficulties with outreach to seniors and, and the ability to teach them new technologies. And there are concerns from um, artists and city officials about AI and copyright infringement and infringement on creativity. So while these are, of course, meaningful public concerns, there are also barriers to the library staff's ability to advance programs and learning. Um, so, you know, just for example, there was a technology librarian who wanted to promote an art workshop and art show using AI image generation, um, and he was shot down. He wasn't able to do it because there was so much concern from the leaders and from the community about where the art comes from and um, what would actually be displayed in this show. So. Um, so just to kind of wrap it up a little bit here, um, but by designing with rather than for the library staff, um, we aim to support them in developing and implementing programs that support meaningful change within the community. This collaborative approach allowed us to identify and address the assets and barriers faced by the librarians, leveraging their expertise and understanding the community and patrons to ensure the effectiveness and sustainability of programs and activities. The use of design cycles holds practical applications for designing PD around connected learning, particularly around how librarians shifted from centering their own interests and experience to those of their patrons and community. Using design cycles can afford library staff the chance to envision futures, discover where their collective interests and visions align, and determine concrete ways to develop and test their ideas. Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, we had some limitations in this study. While library staff showed enthusiastic engagement in the um, imagine and ideation steps, those tensions that arose around building and testing as they recognized the limitations um, to building or implementing some of their programs um, within the within their actual context was a real limitation. Um, another thing was just the duration of this PD program. We were engaged by the library for just a few months, just five PDs, and obviously it would have been really great to directly involve patrons as participants in these design cycles. Um, that would have been a really important, you know, part of, of designing for the community. 
So at any rate, we're hoping this study helps to answer the call that was put out in um, that last paper from Ito and colleagues about a decade of connected learning. And um, we hope that it advances current understandings of designing for connected learning by first applying the connected learning model to library staff and encouraging them to connect to their own interests, and then by building their capacity as learning brokers before then taking an iterative approach to designing for connected learning in their libraries. That was a lot of talking all by myself, but um, thank you for listening to our video and for reading our paper. Um, we're looking forward to this discussion in the Connected Learning Summit and meeting some of you. Um, and one more slide just to show you how to reach our team if you're interested. Our websites and email addresses are there. So thank you so much.